Hello everyone, we're going to take a look at two specific genetic diseases that are likely to come up in an exam. And so you've talked about the theoretical blue eye, brown eye type of thing, which isn't exactly true at all, but for some reason it's the most common example to illustrate genetic principles as well too. So we're going to look at two. Uh, we're going to squeeze in a lot of detail into a, a, a couple little points and paragraphs just so you can understand the big picture significance of it. It's really easy to get lost in the Punnett square stuff when you're actually just, uh, you know, putting the letters down and then calculating it and saying, okay, I figured it out, I solved it, mathematical problem. But to be able to really understand the biological significance, all the systems, the organ systems that are being affected by this particular disease and what we can actually use to figure this out. So cystic fibrosis is one of them and Huntington's disease is the other that we're going to talk about. So cystic fibrosis, it's significant because it's one of the most common genetic diseases. Actually, it's the commonest genetic disease in Europe. It's a recessive allele, so it's represented with a small C, a, little, a small C. Be careful when you're writing big C's and small C's, make your small c is really really small so that you can tell the difference and you don't get yourself all confused it's a recessive allele of the cftr gene located on chromosome number seven and it messes with a channel a protein channel that allows chloride ions to get through so we're already linking multiple parts of the syllabus here moving things across a cell membrane a plasma membrane you require in some in some cases protein channels so in this case something is up with the shape of this actual chloride ion channel because proteins are chains of amino acids and whatever mutation that's in here in the recessive version the recessive allele has resulted in an amino acid to be out of place or a wrong amino acid and so this protein has the wrong shape and as a result of that you don't get the correct amounts or concentrations of chloride ions going across and so it actually affects the secretion of mucus and it results in very sticky mucus that can clog uh, your bronchioles and airways. So we can use a Punnett square to solve this just like any other type of thing. So in this case, we have a father who is a carrier. Carrier means heterozygous, which means the father doesn't actually show the traits of the disease. If the mother is also a carrier and also heterozygous, you can see if we separate their alleles, see, I can, I can barely tell the difference between this big C and this small C. So when the mother produces eggs, she can't put both of these into one egg. So it has to split by the law of segregation. You have to have have the amount of genetic information. So if it's a big C you get or a little C that you get, it can combine with either the big C or the little C that the father gives. So here are the final possibilities. Only when you inherit two copies of the recessive allele, the recessive version of this CFTR gene, do you end up with a kid who actually has cystic fibrosis. So when both parents are carriers, you have a 25% chance of getting that. Now notice here, I put big C, little C. Over here, we put little C, big C. Different books show this different ways. I like to just keep all the capital letters letters first and all the lowercase letters second. It helps us to really see that these are not two unique genotypes. This is the same thing, but it's just showing you where they came from or where the actual alleles came from. So that's cystic fibrosis. Again, using a Punnett square to solve it. And that's some of the background and significance of why cystic fibrosis is such a nasty disease. So once again, there are three possible genotypes you can have here. Big C, big C is normal. Big C, little c, heterozygous or a carrier shows the normal trait isn't actually affected by the disease, but has the potential to pass this on in their sperm or egg cells. And then of course, if you're little c, little c or homozygous recessive, you actually have the disease cystic fibrosis. So that's what cystic fibrosis is all about. Let's take a look at this other disease, Huntington's disease as well too. Now this is handled differently in a Punnett square. You need to know the cause of the actual uh, disease or the trait and know if it's dominant or recessive. In this case, uh, the results of the Punnett square when we analyze it is actually going to be different because the allele that causes Huntington's disease is actually a dominant version of it. So it's from the HTT, the Huntington gene. It's located on chromosome number four. The protein's name is Huntington with the I-N or Huntington. Huntington. I don't know if you say it like that. I'm going to say it like that. A protein named Huntington. Function is actually unknown. But what we do know is that 
when there is this particular dominant allele present, uh, you get some pretty harmful effects, actually. Degeneration in the brain, changes in behavior, thinking and emotions, uh, long-term eventual death from heart failure, pneumonia, and infectious disease, very late onset of symptoms. So that actually affects the ability to diagnose this particular gene as well to this particular disease. So let's take a look at a hypothetical example, a father who is heterozygous. So remember, if the dominant allele actually causes this, then the father actually shows traits of Huntington's disease. The mother is little h, little h. The mother does not have the ability to pass on Huntington's disease, and she doesn't show the traits either. So if you take the big H, separate it into 50% of possibility, little h over here, little h, little h, here are the different combinations you get. And you should be able to see from this particular Punnett square, if you know that Huntington's is caused by the dominant allele, that anybody who has a big H in there is going to be showing the disease, Huntington's disease, and those who don't have the big H will be little h, little h. So you can see, actually, I think I might have described this as a carrier. This does not make sense for a carrier. Even though it's heterozygous, it has the same kind of genotype as this, but depending on how this disease is actually inherited, because it's dominant, I wouldn't describe this as a carrier. Carrier is usually reserved for a term that means has the ability to pass on the trait, but is not showing the actual trait itself. But this father, because of Huntington's disease being dominant, uh, actually has Huntington's disease as a result of this. So these are two of the most common genetic diseases that would show up in a particular question, and you need to be able to kind of see the big picture of how genetics links to proteins, which links to body systems, which links to systems of membrane transport, especially in terms of cystic fibrosis and chloride ion facilitated diffusion.